I'd like to say thank you for all the people that made this all possible. You changed my life in ways that I can't even explain. Of course, I'm grateful. He had other problems, but just not think, thinking that I don't have to put any insulin shot on him, that, that made my life. For parents who are transitioning now, I would just encourage them to have faith and hope. And they are part of a blessing. They are part of a miracle. And I'm totally blessed by what we've got. I wouldn't change it for the world. We certainly look at this as nothing shy of a, of a miracle, a true miracle. When gifted minds in medicine and science from across the globe work together, sometimes true miracles can happen. Hello there, I'm Warner Saunders. For three days this past summer, 25 families and more than 100 doctors, scientists, nurses, and other healthcare professionals from around the world met right here in Chicago at the University of Chicago's Bleacher Center to attend the first monogenic diabetes family forum ever held in North America. They came collectively for one reason, to celebrate their miracles. These are the faces of children and adults diagnosed with rare forms of diabetes, known collectively as monogenic diabetes. And in their case, a very rare subset, neonatal diabetes. Until recently, monogenic diabetes was practically unheard of in the medical community. Now it is being referred to as a third type of diabetes, which is very different from either type 1 or type 2. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease in which antibodies attack and destroy insulin-producing cells. With type 2 diabetes, the pancreas fails for various reasons to produce enough insulin. Monogenic diabetes is neither of those. It is triggered by a genetic mutation that causes otherwise normal insulin-producing cells not to function properly. The ATP sensitive potassium channel, which is key for the release of insulin, doesn't work in patients with monogenic diabetes. Until recently, doctors only knew to prescribe an intense regimen of insulin treatment to control blood sugars. Thankfully, a recent medical discovery has dramatically changed all of that. As a result of many years of dedicated research, determination, and generous collaboration by doctors and scientists from around the world came a discovery so groundbreaking that it has literally changed lives. Scientists found that many patients diagnosed with diabetes at a very early age, before six months of age, can literally switch their treatment from insulin injections to commonly used oral medications. These medications, called sulfonylureas, were originally developed for people with type 2 diabetes. The amazing result, these pills actually enable the function of those dormant insulin-secreting cells so that they can produce insulin on their own, a true miracle, the gift of being free from a lifetime of insulin injections and serious health complications. It was at this historic conference that these families from as far away as Alaska, Venezuela, and Puerto Rico, together with professionals from both the U.S. and the U.K., had the opportunity to meet, to interact, to inspire one another, and share their stories. Hosting the conference and leading the professional delegation was Dr. Lou Philipson, professor of medicine and pediatrics and director of the Kovler Diabetes Center at the University of Chicago. I want to officially welcome you to this amazing experience, which we're calling Celebrating the Miracles. It is an amazing experience for me to be up here and look out and see all of you here today. I'm often asked how this uh, experience relates to sort of the entire history of, of biology and medicine uh, in terms of the unusual benefit of making a genetic diagnosis to, to a patient and a family, uh, both in terms of not only the diagnosis, but also the treatment. 
And I'm hard pressed to come up with uh, any sort of equivalent example. This is a huge victory for, for science, for the relationship of molecular biology to a disease, and, and, and a specific, cheap, effective, appropriate treatment for that disease. And it's really another, it's a, it's a hallmark of what we've been calling personalized genetic medicine. This was a very positive experience and uh, a, a transformational. Dr. Siri Greeley, instructor of pediatrics at the University of Chicago, spearheaded the establishment of the neonatal diabetes registry for those diagnosed with neonatal monogenic diabetes. We established a national United States neonatal diabetes registry where patients come from all over the country. Since that time, our neonatal diabetes registry now includes well over 150 cases of diabetes diagnosed under a year of age um, in the United States and a few cases beyond the United States. In 2004, a British scientist, Andrew Hattersley, discovered this rare mutation in one of the genes controlling insulin. Dr. Fran Ashcroft of Oxford University, who collaborated with Dr. Hattersley, has devoted almost 30 years to research that contributed to the breakthrough. Attending this conference, Dr. Ashcroft met for the first time with the families that embraced her for changing their lives. It was indeed an emotional experience for all. The thing that has been the most wonderful, the most sustained, and the most emotional experience for me, and which continues, is to meet and to see all the patients who've been able to transfer from insulin injections to sulfonylurea urea therapy. And coming here has been, I feel loved. I feel loved by all these people and it's just wonderful. In some funny way, I see these children here as part of my family, even though they're nothing to do with me. But I kind of hope that in some way I have touched their lives a little and it's just wonderful. There were many memorable moments at the conference, but none more inspiring than when Lori Jaffe spoke about her daughter, Lily. In 2006, Lily, just six years old, was one of the first children in the United States to be switched from insulin to pills. It was her inspirational story that spread around the world and helped give public identity to monogenic diabetes. It gives us great fulfillment to know that our story has been used to inspire other people, not just with diabetes, but other people and other families who suffer with chronic illness. And it's been very, very exciting and fulfilling to be able to share Lily's story in a way that has been able to reach other families, other children with the same condition and that we've been able to share and spread that miracle. This conference was all about miracles and the families who have experienced them. We thank God for the miracle of his birth and then the miracle of his transition from insulin injection to oral medication and uh, we know there's another miracle coming and we're, we're, we're open for it, we're ready. Not just for us but for all the kids and all the adults that have monogenic diabetes. Everybody that's found out about uh, Lily's story or our own or some of the other stories that are out there that have a diabetic child, if it doesn't do anything else for them, there's a measure of hope because some of those children are going to be able to take advantage of this situation. Those that aren't, I would bet you that any one of those families would be thrilled to those that can, and it does provide some hope that if this has happened, maybe in the not too distant future, something else is going to happen that's going to help my child. You say thank you. You say, I don't believe it's happened. You say, thanks for your persistence, your passion, your love for what you do every day, because you changed so many people's lives. And you made my son 10 times better and happier than what he was when he was little due to his disease. And I can never thank you enough. 
thanks to research, more than 100 adults and children with diabetes in the United States have now transitioned from insulin dependence to pills. The challenge is to reach the many others who could also be helped by this life-changing news. The team at the Kovler Diabetes Center is doing their part to educate the medical community. But the most effective means of finding families thus far has been through the media, including the internet. Every time a family's miracle story has been shared in the media, another person has been found. It is clear that it has been a grassroots effort to reach people directly through the media. There are many others out there whose lives could also be changed if they heard this story. At the University of Chicago Kovler Diabetes Center and research institutions around the world, scientists continue to study the complexities of diabetes. So what about the future? Dr. Graham Bell, professor of medicine and human genetics at the University of Chicago, had this to say. When I began my research career many years ago, I had no imagination that at this, I would reach the point that I am today where the work that we do has a direct impact on individual lives. It not only changes the life of the child that is switched from insulin to pills for the treatment of their diabetes, it changes the life of the family, and it changes, also has changed the life of the investigative team. And not only myself, but the students, fellows, and technicians that work with me, their lives have been changed as well. And we all are working now to create additional miracles. Yeah.